Welcome to the High Band with Word podcast, transformative studies of the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harris, and this is my podcast. Looking forward to this new season of studies. We're going to be opening the book of Hebrews and studying it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. This is an exciting book about the new covenant and the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He is. Grab your Bibles, grab your notebook, and let's get ready to go. Fight the good fight of faith. Along here through the book of Hebrews on our study. You have some type of graphic organizer, I trust, right? A graphic? You want me to do a graphic organizer? Yeah, like he wants one. <laughs> yeah. What would you like this graphic organizer to have on it? Timeline. Like a timeline yeah. of the Book of Hebrews? However you want to do it. All right. just, we cover so much and you know, we only get to once a week, so it's it'd be very fruitful. For me mm. You take notes, you restudy, do stuff like that. No, right. I'm just kidding. Selfish, I, <laughs> uh, I plan on making some, uh, I, mean, I, did, I mean, I made a couple of graphics before the study to try to give a, 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 an overview. The one graphic I think you want to keep in mind is how the book, the tree one, yeah. The one, the, the one graphic or the one image you want to keep in your mind, I was thinking of draw, redrawing it anyways today, is a timeline, like I had driven, uh, drawn before, how, uh, how, where the book of Hebrews fits in. If, if, I was, if, I, if I was the person receiving this book, this is how I would see the future, all right? Because I'm, I, don't, I don't know anything about grace. I don't know anything about the Apostle Paul. So I would see this as the timeline. So I, I know that the cross occurred because I'm a believer, right? I'm, I mean, so I'm a, I'm, I'm, the, he's writing the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew kingdom saints, right? And so uh, this is what we would see as we go forward in time, right? So a line. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the, those dates are somebody's guess. Yeah. They're not, they're not the... Uh, I mean, they could be factual, but they're not uh, inspired, right? I believe the book of Hebrews was written a little earlier. Um, I think early, mid-Acts-ish, okay? Paul could have been around, but Paul hadn't been going to the... I mean, he didn't go to the Jewish... He didn't go down to Jerusalem. He didn't convey anything until Acts 15. But like, when, when, well, let me show you what I mean. So go to Acts 15. So when you get, by the time you get to Acts 15, which is about... It's about... Um, in Galatians 1, Paul says that, you know, I did all these things. I didn't go visit anybody. And then about 10 years later, or was it 14 years later? Is that what he says? Okay, let me read what it says. I'll read it, and then we'll see what, what where, where did I say I was going to go? Ac- <laughs> you go to Acts 15. I'm going to go Galatians 1. Okay, just give me a second. Re- let me read something to you. So Paul lays out a timeline on his experience with the apostles and others, right? So in... Um, Verse 10 of, Acts, of Galatians 1, he says, for, um, actually, verse, verse 11, sorry. It says, but I, certify, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which preached of me is not after men. Paul says, the stuff that I have that I'm sharing with you about the gospel of the grace of God was not after men. I didn't receive it from men, but for I neither received it of man, verse 12, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So in Galatians 1, Paul says, the message that I received, the thing I'm sharing with you, I received directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, you, you know, you've heard some things about me. Verse 13, for you've heard, but go to Galatians 1, I guess. Sorry. If you haven't gone there, go there. Since so we're going to go through the whole thing here. Galatians 1. Because I'm going to give you the timeline when, when, uh, when uh, Acts 15 happens, right? So Paul gets saved in Acts 9. Well, there's an account of Paul being saved in Acts 9 on the road to Damascus, right? So after he gets saved, this is sort of what he's saying. Here's what happened. He says, I I have a message I'm sharing, but I didn't receive it from anybody. I didn't receive it from Peter, Paul, or yeah, Peter, James, John, anybody like that. Verse 13. For you've heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, that how beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Before I was saved, okay, you heard, man, I was, I was out after the church of God. Okay, huh? Is that, you're talking about the body of Christ here? No, he's talking about the kingdom saints. He's talking about Peter and those guys, right? All the believers, the 3,000 saved in a day and the 5,000 saved in a day. Those individuals, Paul was persecuting them. And that was the church of God. Not the body of Christ, not the church of the body of Christ, but those were the kingdom saints, their hope. And that's what the book of Hebrews is written to, that church of God, okay? Those individuals is who the book of Hebrews is written to. But anyways, Paul says in verse 14, And I profited, and, and profited in the Jews' religion above many mine equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. I mean, I was, I was a top dog uh, in, in, in the religion. I mean, uh, he was a, 
Pharisee of the Pharisees. I mean, he, he gives some other places where he gives his pedigree. Uh, reluctantly gives his pedigree, but he's, you know, that's what he did. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, I mean, on the road to Damascus, right, God appeared to him, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach among him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. That's Acts 9. Paul's, you know, he meets Christ. Christ says, I'm going to send you to the heathen. I'm going to send you to uh, the the Gentiles. We're gonna, you're going to preach. You're, you're going to you're going to present me before kings and and all kinds of people in authority. And you're going to suffer for my name's sake. You know, read what he says in Acts nine, and he repeats it two other places in the book of Acts. But but he said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. So I didn't go talk to the apostles, right? Neither went up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. So I mean, I didn't go. I didn't go to Jerusalem. I didn't go talk to the the twelve that were down there. Okay. Uh, but, it, but, but what he did was this, is, but I went into Arabia. Okay? We don't know how long it was there, but he wasn't there for ye- like hundreds of years. Right? We know that uh, you know, the, the, the time, we, we know the timeline in, in the book of Acts. So he's there for months, maybe a year or so. I mean, not really sure. And then he returned again unto Damascus. Okay? Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. So after three years, I did go see Peter. All right, uh, and I bowed with him how, what, 15 days. So he had a two-week vacation uh, with Peter. He would just be with him. But other of the apostles, what? So I none save James, the Lord's brother. So I mean, he's basically saying I did. I ran into him and did you know chat with him. like you talked to the brew bakers, right? You know, ran into the brew bakers, right? So I, I saw him, right? Well, he wasn't with James for two weeks either. Now the things which I write unto you before, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Those were the believers, the kingdom of saints. They're in Christ, but not the body of Christ. They are, they are Jews, all right? They are, uh, you, know, they're, you know, we're not getting Gentiles saved because they're ticked off that Paul's talking to Gentiles, okay? He has to explain what he's doing. Because they're not, you know, that's, that's not what's happening in this kingdom church. I mean, Peter, in, uh, you know, Acts 10 and 11, has to explain, explain himself that he went and talked to a Gentile. And he was afraid when he was going to go back and talk to James and the others that he had talked to a Gentile. That God had sent him there. He said, what am I going to do? God sent me. So, you know, it wasn't like there were all kinds of Gentiles being saved at Pentecost, right? Uh, that wasn't happening. I mean, James, I mean, in, in Acts chapter 15, you find out that James says, oh, by the way, God's words does actually say the Gentiles will be saved. All right, that's what's said in Acts 15. All right, so they're not. So the Book of Hebrews is not to the body of Christ in any way, shape, or form. And I believe it's written before Acts 15, by the way. So, anyways, because that's when Paul actually goes down and tells everybody. You're going to see it here in a minute. Verse 23. But they had heard only, but you know, that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorify God in me. So they had heard that I was doing something. But, uh, and, uh, and things like that. Then, 14 years after. So, however long it took between verse 11 down to verse 24, which is a couple years of time, right? Multiple years of time. Then, 14 years after that, he went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And he went up by revelation. Basically, God said, do it. And communicated with, unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were a reputation, because if, uh, if I tried to do it openly, they would have sat there and said, like, we deny this because they had this little you know, reputation thing. So he talked to them privately. Lest by any means I should run or have run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was what? They were basically, so what do you think they were telling Paul? What do you think that, what the arguments were? You got to be circumcised, right? Yep, yep, yep. Baptism, yeah, it was part of it. The biggest, the bigger question there was circumcision. Baptism was sort of on the side. Okay, that's a different right. But circumcision was a covenant through Abraham that the only way to be blessed was to be circumcised, be part of that. If you were not, you were cut off from the people, right? And and so the Judaizers, okay, I think it's Acts fifteen verse one said you must be circumcised or you can't be saved. That's what they kept coming behind Paul and saying. They weren't yelling baptism like Sean was saying today. Okay, I mean that, that's you know the, to be say they were saying circumcision, right? But anyways, verse anyways and and then, by the way that was false verse four and that because of false brethren unawares brought in. So some people brought in some uh, false what were they unbelievers? Yeah, they had some others. They had some. Yeah, that's right. They were they were brethren, not. 
people, I mean, just unbelievers. They were brethren, but they were false in that they were, they were anti-whatever. It came and probably to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection? No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might re- continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. God's not a respecter of persons, right? For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. And he's talking about Peter, James, John, all the folks in authority. They had a conference, they had lots of meetings, and they didn't add anything. They basically said, Paul, what about this? You, what about, what, what's the word of God say here? What's the word of God say here? And they didn't add anything to Paul, meaning that they didn't learn, any, Paul didn't learn anything new because he already knew that. But in contrary wise, look what it says, verse 7, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, two gospels, right? Gospel of the kingdom is Peter, the gospel of the grace of God, Paul. For he that, was, verse 8, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship, of the circumcision, that same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, that's Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, they seemed to be the top guys of the group, right? Perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. We shook hands. That we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the what? The circumcision. No, that they would, that we should remember the poor, the same which I was also forward to do. Anyways. So they shook hands, and what they say is something pretty powerful, because it's deeper than what you see when you first think you read it. They came to understand something, okay? They came to understand that God was doing something different today, because they're going to the circumcision. Paul didn't say he's going to the uncircumcision. He's going to the heathen. Who are the heathen? Anybody that doesn't know Christ, right? Who are the circumcision? Well, that happens to be the kingdom church, right? So... What they were saying is, Paul, we understand that God has moved on. He set us aside for a season, all right, and we're just going to maintain. Because the apostles stayed there in Jerusalem. I mean, they're, they're not, you know, what, was God to, what did Christ tell them to go? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the rest of the world, right? You know where they went? Jerusalem, all right? They didn't go any further, right? Now, they, you know, there was some, you know, there's some historical accounts of people went places, but they weren't like as a group moving out, all right? Peter, you know, showed up someplace or whatever. I mean, I mean history says, Bible doesn't show it. But history says, right? They write letters and they send them out. The book of Hebrews, however, is written with the knowledge of not this. Okay, there, there's no knowledge of, of the fact that God has set aside Israel for a season. It says the time is short. It's coming. You know, in fact, we're going to, you know, the, Jesus Christ is the promise of, of good times to come, I think it says in Hebrews 9, right at the beginning of it, all right? There's, there's stuff happening. John First, second, third John. It's about, it's, the, it's we're in the last days, brethren, right? Doesn't matter what those dates say, okay? They, it was written without that knowledge. They could not say it before that. By the way, the Apostle Paul, right after, we're going to go back to reading the Acts, right after this shaking of hands and they agrees to go to the heathen, he goes into a synagogue in the next city and shares the gospel. Well, did he just break a promise? No. He did what he said. He went to the heathen. I mean, they weren't, you know, they were not believers in Jesus Christ. So he went to the heathen, right? They, and so they were, went into maintenance mode. So when you read Second Peter, it's in maintenance mode. Second Peter is, hey guys, yeah, there's a delay. You know, I mean, it, it's it's frustrating. You know, where you know, you know, Christ hasn't come back yet. Where's the where's the where's his promise of his coming? That's. Uh, 2 Peter 3. And what Peter says, if you want to understand it, first count it it's long, you know, that it's long suffering of God, it's, it means salvation. People are coming to Christ. Well, that's what Paul's preaching. And he says, if you really want to understand it, you've got to talk to Paul. All right? Read what 2 Peter 3 says, right? See, that epistle is written after Acts 15. Before, but Acts, Peter, 1 Peter 1, yeah, Pe- yeah, 1 Peter, yeah, 1 Peter is written before. Right? Even with some knowledge, I mean, Paul did went and talked to Peter. It's written early. Go back to Acts 15. Anyway, so we're about, say, 20 years after his conversion, okay? After Acts 9. 10 years, or uh, 14 years-ish, I don't know. It's, it's like 14 years after um, uh, uh, grace is going forward, okay? So it's, it's a, or maybe 10 years past where grace is going forward. Anyways, but anyways, in Acts 15, verse 1. Well, we're going to read it. And certain men who, which came down. So Paul was there. 
where he's preaching. And what's going on is that certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. This is Acts 15, verse 1. All right? So Paul had these Judaizers, that's what he calls them, they're called. They came in behind him and basically said, Hey, and by the way, they had scripture. They had the word of God. All right? It's in the word of God. All right? It says it. All right? You, you know, you, if you're not circumcised, you can't be saved. You can't be, you can't be blessed. God, how, I mean, salvation is a blessing. So how could that possibly happen? And when therefore, and verse 2 says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, I mean, they went toe to toe, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question. They go, let's go just talk to the source. All right? They're coming out of Jerusalem. I mean, that's where they're coming from. Let's go to the source and deal with the source, right? Now, Paul says in Galatians, it was by revelation. God also, apparently, you know, that the early church, they had the body of Christ and also the kingdom saints, they had special gifts, right? Gifts that you don't have. Well, they had prophecy, they had uh, interpretation, they had tongues, they had healing, they had an unction, they could tell that the spirit was, avail it was a person. Uh, there were things like that. Verse 3, And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Now, the writer of Acts, which is Luke, is writing this from actually the Jewish I mean, the, the Jewish perspective, right? From not Jewish in the, there are no, there is no Jew, Jew you know, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile in the body of Christ, right? So Judeo-Christian, right? So anyways, you know, so he's writing from the fact that he's a, he's a kingdom saint. And, and the book of Acts is not about, here's the history of the early church. It's about what happened? What happened, Israel? You know, you know what, what, what happened? You know, I mean, you have, you have this, you know, like Paul or, and Luke gets on the side. He, he knows both because he's on the side of, of the kingdom saints. And then he starts traveling with Paul because he figures out that's what God's doing. And it's writing back to O Theophilus, you know, this, you know, this lover of God. Okay, people that are lovers of God. I mean, it's, it's Luke. It's the second book of Luke. Think of it that way. But what happened to Israel? You know, what's going on? Well, God changed plans. He did something different. He moved from the 12 to the, to the 1, right? And, and, and that, that's going on. Anyways, here's what happened from Luke's perspective. Okay, verse 5. So here are these false brethren. Well, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, what? Believe. Which believed. So that's the false brethren, all right? They were Pharisees, but they believed. Okay, they're believers, saying that it is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Says, you know what? We're okay with them getting, you know, you know, you preach to them, Paul, but they got to, you know, you got to make them proselytes. They got to become proselytic Jews. They, they got to be circumcised. They got to follow the law of Moses. They were Pharisees which believed. They believed in Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, what Jesus, what Christ said, you know, he, he believed on the Son hath life, who believes not the Son hath not life. It's, you know, they have to believe, I mean, since the cross, they have to believe he's, you know, he's the Messiah, he's the resurrected one, he's, he paid, he took care of sin, he, I mean, the second covenant sounds a lot like grace, right? Because it is about what Christ did, okay? They, you know, they did not know that the law was nailed to the cross until the writer of Hebrews told them, because that's what, you know, the law is disannulled, right? There's a new covenant, there's a new law, right? Now, did anybody else know the law was, you know, now that across till Paul said it? Okay. I mean, the issue is, if Paul says it, it's true for all. It's not just true for members of the body of Christ. It's true for all. And the writer of Hebrews is sort of like, it's, that's why everybody thinks Paul wrote it, because it sounds like what Paul would have said. Well, it's what they, you know, that's what's the truth for the day, okay? God, the, 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 old, the, the old covenant as, as the writer of Hebrews says, is waxing old, it's fading away. There's a, there's a new priesthood, you know, this, there, there's this, you know, uh, after an everlasting life, it's through Jesus Christ, after the order of Melchizedek, with a new promise. It's better than the old promises. The old, and that's what we're going to, that, that was the study we're supposed to do today. Better than the old promises, because the old promises, you know, they, they, they required you to do something, okay, to, to, to be in line with God. The new promise says, it's not about you. God says it's about my name. I'm going to change you from the inside out. That's what you should have figured out. But you tried to, work, you know, I gave you a law. So do this, do this, do this. And you would, you know, maybe that would filter into your heart. 
but it didn't because it's, it's all, you know, because it's you. You're a sinner. You need grace, right? That's what the Jews need. That's what the Hebrews needed. That's what everybody has ever needed since Adam is grace. Everybody, there's nobody that's ever been saved by works, right? No one. God's word says it, but Paul says it, all right? I mean, if you want to, you know, take the authority of Paul. And by when he says no one, he's not talking about just in the body of Christ. Not since, you know, not since Acts 9. Okay? It's, it's been all time. Since the cross, moving forward, it's all about the cross and what Christ did. Before the cross, other things. You know, they believe what God said. Abraham believed God. What did he believe? He's going to make him a father of many nations. He's going to bless him, right? Okay. Right? That's what Abraham believed in God. And he, you know, he was fully persuaded. You know what? I quit looking at myself. Right? Quit looking at the fact I'm almost 100 years old or whatever the age was at the time. All right? And, I, and I just, I'm just believing God. It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay? I look in the mirror and I can't have kids. How can, I have, how can I be the father of many nations? But he just one day said, okay, God, you say it. I believe it. I'm trusting you. I mean, salvation's that way. I mean, you know, Christ died for your sins. You know, can you feel it, taste it? Well, you, one day you have to believe it. You have to just trust it. You trust what Christ did for you and that Christ died for your sins and buried and rose again. You believe it. You're fully persuaded of what God said he was able to do. And he says he's just going to give you righteousness and holiness and you believe it and you rest in it. You're saved, right? No actions or works do it, right? Since the cross, everyone is focused back on the cross, the redemptive work of Christ, right? That's the reality, right? I mean, and now it's packaged slightly differently, okay? Yeah, under the under the because the second covenant, the new covenant, also has other blessings as to do with the earth. What we got, what we have to not lose sight of is the body of Christ has is a is a special organism organization, however you want to think about it, that has a special calling. It's a heavenly calling. Okay, how you get into the body of Christ is believe that Christ died for sins, buried, and rose again. Salvation, right? You're in the body of Christ because of that. You have a heavenly calling. It's a time we live in today, all right? Israel will believe in a very similar thing, you know, as, as individuals, right? Okay, and they're going to have an earthly calling, okay? Their purpose, their plan for God, ha that God has for them. Their resurrection body can be different than yours, right? I don't know if, how it is. I mean, I don't see a lot of the script. But when I see the, the scriptures of, you know, uh, their body, it's going to be like Christ's body. What's your body like? Like Christ's body, right? So, so you know, I don't know if it's any different or not, but I do know that your body is going to enable you to function in heavenly places. Their body is going to enable them to function on earthly places. Whether it has more of that or not, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I can't tell. Acts 15, go back there. So where's the book of Hebrews at? I guess is what I'm looking at, the question, right? So anyway, so verse 5. Again, of Acts 15. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, okay, saying that it is needful to circumcise them, to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. So they all came together. Paul's there. They're there. There's a lot of yelling and screaming and hollering. And, and so the elders said, whoa, 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 let's get together. We're going to consider this matter. And when there had been much, verse 7, much what? Disputing. Peter stands up. Peter stands up. This is like 10 years after Cornelius, all right? All right, Acts 10, all right? You know, so 10, 11 years. So, oh, it's actually longer than that. I mean, it's been a long time ago. In fact, Peter says it this way. Okay? And when there was much, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, all right, it's been, a, you know, remember way back when God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. He says, you know, and God, which knoweth the hearts, Bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? I mean, Allah didn't help us. But we believe, notice what they believe. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, what? Even as they. So Paul says, it's by grace, by grace, by grace. And Peter says, when it gets down to it, that's exactly what we believe. We believe that, there, you know, now Peter says, now when Peter says that, you may think, and some people say, well, see, okay, Gentiles are now being saved. But the interesting thing is what James says coming up, and what James says is this, 
Then all the multitude kept silent. Okay, Peter, you know, they all shut up. And gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So then they actually listened to him, right? And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Hey, I have some words I want to share. I mean, you know, I don't know if you realize that, that Peter is moving to second place here in, in the kingdom church. And, I mean, he's supposed to have the keys of the kingdom. He's supposed to be the top dog, but what you find out is James has the authority, all right, which tells you that something has changed, okay, because Paul's on the scene now after Acts 13, right? Anyways, men and brethren, hearken to me. Simeon, that's Peter, he has lots of names, had declared how God at the first had visited the Gentiles to take of them a people for his name. And to this agree what? <coughs> Words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the res residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Anyways, when James rises up and says, Hey, God's word says Gentiles can be saved. If all kinds of Gentiles are being saved, this makes no sense, this discussion. Because they would all have known it. They'd all been happy about it. They'd have been all busy doing it. But they're not doing it. Okay, because, you know, Peter says, remember a long time ago I did it? Nobody else is doing it because they would be mad at him, right? Sure, they weren't preaching salvation by grace alone because the question is about circumcision and the law, right, at this point. That's Luke's account of Galatians chapter 1 and 2. <coughs> okay, or actually 2, all right? That's Galatians 2. Paul says they shook hands. By the way, he goes on to say, here's what James says. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write on them. So we're not going to trouble them. We're not going to preach to them either, right, by the way. That they abstain from pollution of idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. But anyways, that's exactly what, uh, what, what Paul says. They basically said, you know, you know, watch the poor and don't drink blood. All right, that's just, you know, gross. Uh, anyways, well, I'll keep reading here. For Moses' old time hath in every city uh, them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased that the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to end up with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Anyway, so they sent them up back to Antioch, and they wrote letters basically saying, hey, we approve these guys, right? What the writer of Acts, Luke doesn't do here is tell you they shook hands and that a decision was made. We know that from Paul. Right. Now, the book of Hebrews doesn't have knowledge of this conversation, right? So I, I can't see it being written after Acts 15, all right? It's, I mean, it could be written after Paul saved, it can be written maybe, you know, after Paul is sent forward, okay, because he doesn't talk to anybody, right? He doesn't go down to Jerusalem. Oh, I think it's earlier than that, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so what's the book writer, so, what's the writer, sir, excuse me, talking too fast, too long, too dry? So, what? It's a good thing I was paying attention. A good thing you were. So, what's the writer of Hebrews, or what's the book of Hebrews? Where does it fit in, or how does it see things, right? So, there's the cross, all right? Christ descends. Right, so he ascends. Then you have this early Acts period, like, and when he ascends, so he ascends. He says, "Hang out, the Holy Spirit's going to come." Ten days ish, I think it's less than ten days, but so the Holy Spirit comes down. So this is the Holy Spirit. That's Pentecost, right? That's Pentecost. Is there an E on Pentecost? Old English, probably there is. So I got to put one on. Got away with it, right? Just so you know that. So, so Pentecost occurs, right? And so now you have this outpouring of the Spirit. Okay, a year passes, right? About a year after this happens, you have the stoning of Stephen, right? So Stephen is stoned. Um, that's what they're doing, sure. Yeah, in fact, and, and the repenting of bapt you know, so if you were to read Acts 2, which talks, repent be baptized, and be baptized for the remission of sins, all right? And then what the, what, what the result is is something different than most people think. So go back to... People say, and you get saved, but Acts chapter 2, look what it says in verse 37, Acts 2, 37. So this was one year in here. So Acts 2, verse 38, or 37. So Paul, or Peter, Peter, in verse 22, he says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved to God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also known. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands, what? Crucified and slain. All right? 
<laughs> the message that Peter is sharing at Pentecost is accusation. You killed the Lord of glory. It's not about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ for our sins. When we preach the death of Christ, it's a positive thing. It's a, it's a good thing, right? I mean, it's what, you know, without that, you have nothing, right? This is an accusation against the nation of what they did. Verse 32, this Jesus, by the way, if you read the earlier part, you killed him. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. And we've all seen him, okay? Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and received the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. So this miracle you see happening right now, that's, that's here because of Christ is at the right hand of God, and he's, he's there. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my footstool, or my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Right? Sit until, right? Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And so their response is, what do we do? Well, they didn't get angry. They got scared. Okay? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. That means they were convicted. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? How can we, you know, I mean, here's the, you, you killed the king. All right? I mean, you know, what's going to happen? All right? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. You need to change your perspective on things and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So the ref, you know, the sins are refocused, I guess. And ye shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all the, that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying. But anyway, so that repentance, repentancing and baptism relates to more, I mean, it's individual, right? I mean, the individuals have to do it, but it has to do with the nation has crucified Christ. And so the nation needs to rede be redeemed, has to, needs to, to um, uh, turn around to God. And so that's what the apostles were doing. They're preaching, and that's why you're in five, six, seven thousand saved in a day or whatever, to becoming that, the, 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 what God wanted them to be. They needed to convert, okay? They needed to change. It is soul salvation, all right? However, the, the baptism doesn't save. The writer of Hebrews says that the baptism doesn't save. How does the baptism save? Well, the baptism basically gets them in the boat. Basically, again, they're trying to enter in the rest. The kingdom of God is at hand. Okay? Israel is to be a nation of priests. Right? Baptism is a uh, ceremonial uh, activity. It's a washing right, of the priesthood. Right? If you, I mean, maybe next time, how would I, I mean, we're out of time. Um, next time I'll start off, we'll go back to Leviticus. And, and we'll look at that, that, that baptism. But that pat, baptism relates to that the ceremony of them being a nation of priests, right? They, so they need, to, they, they need to come to God again. Uh, like, for instance, when John the Baptist was um, baptizing people in the river, right? Okay, it was for the remission of sins, right? Okay, did that baptism save their souls? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. I'm going to tell you right now, it didn't save their souls. It had to do with them recognizing their need, all right, and that they needed, you know, and, and they needed, and because cause, cause they didn't really know Christ. I mean, in fact, he says, behold, here comes the Lamb, right, of God, all right? And, and Christ needed to be baptized. Why did Christ need to be baptized? It wasn't for the remission of sins. Well, it was because that's what needed to happen because he was to be a priest. He used to be the priest of, of the high priest of Israel, right? They, you know, so it was, it was part of completing that activity, all right? Well, and by the way, the writer of Hebrews explains this stuff, right? That's what we're dealing with. So, Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love and your grace. Father God, we're thankful, Lord, for just your gifts and all you are. And just watch over us, Lord. Keep us safe. Uh, pray, Lord, for the church service today, that, Lord, that the words that will be shared are your words. And, Lord, let your spirit just touch our hearts with them. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.